almost too many comic books spiking in the marketplace. Jem, how are we gonna keep up with all of them? The only way we can keep up, we gotta do it runners up. With so many comic books spiking in the marketplace on a weekly basis, we gotta make this extra video for the community. Hit the like, slap the subscribe button. We're talking the runners up list. Single price record breakers found on Key Collector Comics. Coming in at number 10, one of my kids' favorite games, we have Minecraft, but it ain't the game, it's the preview for the 2019 graphic novel, which was distributed at Comic-Con 2018. That's right, coming out in 2018, a preview appearance, and with Jason Momoa rumored to play a main role for a Minecraft movie? That was announced in April. How strange, Aquaman in the Minecraft world? The verse? I don't even know, but we do have a 9.8 last week going for $203, but seven days have gone by, and we have an increase of 97% hitting 400 this week. Well, we do have Batman in the Lego world, so maybe not too much of a stretch. Moving on to number nine, we got Marvel Team Up Annual number four. Now, this is the first meeting of Moon Knight, Daredevil, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist. Tom, why do you think this book is spiking? The same reason we've been telling the community for what seems like months now. This is the year of these alt key appearances, these major milestone moments in runs, when characters meet up for the first time, when villains battle heroes for the first time. And this one is more of the same. We have a 9.8 going for 350 just in 2021, up 71%. Proving us right, landing at $600 this week. Some healthy gains for the street level heroes. Moving on to number eight, we have ASM 44, the second appearance of the lizard. Crazy to think that this second appearance happened so long after his first appearance. We have ASM 6 debuting in 1963, and it wouldn't be until 67 that would see a reprisal of this villain. This book, I think, is just gone missed. A lot of people don't know that this is a major second appearance, which is why we're seeing numbers move now, versus last year when seemingly all the ASM books started blowing up. We have a 7.0 that went for 460 in December. It's up 70% now, selling for $783. That's an increase of $323. Yo, Jam, we got to give a big shout out to Dynamite Comics. Shout out Vince, shout out Nikki, because they brought this character back from 1969 to modern comics this year. And so cool to see Vampirella issue two hit number seven on the list. It's the second appearance of Vampirella, but it is also the first appearance of her sister, Draculina. A CGC 9.4 sold for $504 just three weeks ago at the time of recording. It's up 97%, now selling for $995. What seemed like a dormant potential IP has now come back into the modern age of comics. Draculina is here to stay, pushing this book and the second appearance up again. We have at number six, Thor 279, a grossly undervalued and underrated book for a long time. But I suspect with Thor Love and Thunder, members are after these potential key books for the first time in quite some time. And bondage covers are a genre within comic book collecting, which is what's putting Thor 279 on our list with a Jane Foster bondage cover. Take a look at this gem. Happened to find this courtesy of the guru over on Comic Link this week, ending in June, the original cover that's on our list, hitting 20K right now with more than a month left to bid. 20K for the original art. The CGC 9.8 just broke record. It sold for $120 back in 2009. It's up 483% now selling for 700. Utilize code TOM101 on the best comic app in existence, Key Collector Comics. It'll get you access to the runners up list. We source 10 books, our favorites for our video every week, but that list is made up of over 20 other record breakers that you have to see. They're astonishing. You may have some in your back issue bin. Next at the list at number five, is it because of the trickle down effect? I believe it to be so. We have Foom Magazine issue number 10, debuting in June 1975, pretty damn close to the premiere of the new team in Giant Size X-Men number one. 
Some consider it a true first, some say it's just an early appearance of the new X-Men team in preview. Either way, we're feeling the trickle down from that monster 9.8 sale. Let me remind you, this book sold for $799 back in 2015, and just a few weeks ago, with a 4,105% increase, sold for $33,600. So, what does that mean? Trickle down means the lower grades are going to benefit. The 7.0 sold for $500 back in 2020, and now it's up 208%, selling for $1,539. An increase of over $1,000 since the last record breaker. Hot damn. Comic fam, this next record, I think is going to piss off. Not just a good friend of the show, John from John's Comics with Kids. Shout out Kate and Charlie. But also, fire Ryan, guy Ryan, because they're both after it. Green Lantern, issue number seven. The first appearance of Sinestro, and what's cool is that Prime One Studios just revealed their new one-third scale Sinestro and Green Lantern. Gotta get those for the collection, just like collectors gotta get his first appearance. A 7.0 sold for $1,800 in February. It's up 61%, now selling for $2,895. Another $1,000 increase since the last record sale. You know what I'm about to say. Ha damn! comic fam and we know that green lanterns are headed to hbo max could we see one of the greatest green lantern villains of all time probably right i mean like hit the like button slap the subscribe button we're going to be here when it inevitably happens and at the list at number three another very undervalued key fantastic for annual number six I was specking so hard on this, just thinking what other big bad can fill Thanos' shoes? And I think Annihilus and the Annihilation Wave could just be that. And there's a lot of collectors that agree with me there. This is also a double key as it's the first appearance of Franklin Richards, which could be a beast in itself in the MCU. The ruler of the negative zone. And you're right, Jam. A lot of people were speculating on this book, just like they were specking on Mephisto's first appearance. So let's do a comparison. Great comparison, Silver Surfer 3, the first appearance of Mephisto in 2020, a CGC 9.8 sold for $38,400. Just two years later, that same grade sold for $55,200. Now both sales occurred when there was no speculation about Mephisto. One was prior to WandaVision, one was well after, and it was during that show that people were really hung up on Mephisto possibly being introduced in the MCU. So similar to the 2020 sale of Silver Surfer 3 hitting $38,400. This month, we see a Fantastic Four annual number 6, 9.8 sell for $33,600. Very close, especially when you consider the total 9.8s graded on the census. Both have a total of eight. They're both square bound books, hard to secure in high grade, and the first appearance of two major Marvel villains. Now that census count, there are 2,480 graded copies of Silver Surfer 3 versus just 1,873 copies of FF Annual 6. Let's prove this point further, Jen, by comparing recent sales in respected grades of each book. Looking at the Silver Surfer 3, a 2-0, going for 380 recently, Versus 160 for the same grade for an FF Annual 6. A 3.0 of Silver Surfer 3 goes for 385 versus 275 for FF Annual 6. The 4.0, Mephisto's first appearance hitting 445 versus 215 for Annihilus. And Silver Surfer 3 continues to outperform in all grades. In the 5.0, it sold for 660 versus 320. In the 6.0, it sold for 1025 versus 490. In the 7.5, it sold for 12.55 versus 7.75, and finally the 8.5 Silver Surfer 3 sells for 2,400, whereas the FF Annual 6 just 1,500. But why is it making our list this week? Well, it's because this is one of the five undervalued books found on Key Collector's new category. We have a monster record breaker, a 9.4 prior record set in February for 5760 is up over two grand this week. An increase of 39% selling for $8,000. Hot damn, comic fam. I know very Gary's happy. He's been hoarding those FF annual sixes. I already got rid of mine. I can't do the long-term game like that. Moving on to number two, we have Tales of Suspense, issue 57, the first appearance, the cover, and origin of Clint Barton Hawkeye. 
Debuting in 1964, the third appearance of the Black Widow, a white cover that gets scuffed to all hell, tough to secure in high grade, a 9.0, going back in January for $5,760, and that was really post the Hawkeye craze, and it didn't cool down. We see an increase of 46%, over $2,000 uptick, selling for $8,400. Disney Plus doing justice for these books and leaving it open-ended where we can continue to enjoy these characters in the MCU, you gotta hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. I'm sure Tom's got something we can give away. Comment down below. Let me know what you think about this list and aren't you to win this Invincible Whatnot variant featuring Omni-Man done by the very talented Tyler Kirkham. And if you enjoy what we do, the videos that we make every single week, give me an excuse to send you comics. Hit the link in the description. Go to ComicTom101.com to join the May Mystery Mail Call. Take a look at this Boys Number 7 reprint. Ben Templesmith's Starlight cover sending out one per box. We have three versions of the cover going out at random. And Jem, hit him with the number one book on our runners-up list this week because it was a monster sale. A book that hasn't been hot for a long time. It was the quintessential modern DC book for a while, Batman Adventures 12, the first comic book appearance of Harley Quinn. And I like what you said. It doesn't seem like it was hot for a long time, but after the last couple of years, members have been putting investment dollars down, especially on modern blue chip potential. And I'm talking about first Deadpool as well as the first Harley Quinn. We have a 9.8 newsstand that broke records this week. What a huge record breaker that was. A monster record-breaking sale it is. A new stand CGC 9.8 sold for $5,760 just in the beginning of April. On April 15th, that record was broken with a sale for $7,955. But that's not what we're here for. Its most recent record-breaking sale just this week puts it up 52%, selling for $8,750. Harley Quinn making major strides in the comic book marketplace. I want to know your thoughts in the comment section below. And, as always, geek responsibly and stay minty fresh. Nuff said. Jam, where can they find us every single Wednesday? Every Wednesday, you can find us on Whatnot for Whatnot Wednesdays. I kick it off at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, which starts off nine hours of live comic book auctions. Dollar start auctions that last as little as 15 seconds long. We got the keys. We got exclusive drops. We got giveaways. Come join the fun. Link in the description. And take a look at these two other videos. We made them for you. So watch them if you want. It's up to you. Please watch them. Have a great week.